Before Elon Musk and Richard Branson, one man truly embodied the persona of the tortured eccentric billionaire genius, Howard Hughes. The father of Hughes Aircraft, this brilliant mind birthed incredible innovations like the legendary Spruce Goose, but was also filled with darkness. Today, the legacies of both the man and his businesses are truly mysterious and legendary. Mystery shrouds even the earliest moments of Hughes' life. Most records place his birth in either Humble or Houston, Texas, with Hughes himself claiming that he was born on Christmas Day in 1905. Along with being a constant enigma, it seems Howard was destined for greatness. His mother, Aline Stone Gano, was a descendant of John Gano, the minister who baptized George Washington. Howard's father, Howard Hughes Sr., was not born of greatness, but built his own legacy as a brilliant inventor and shrewd businessman. In 1909, Howard Sr. invented two cone roller drill bits, which allowed rotary drilling for petroleum in places that were otherwise unreachable. Instead of simply selling the bits, Sr. patented them, founding the Hughes Tool Company. Howard Jr. also showed incredible potential. With a natural aptitude for math and science, at 11, he built the first wireless radio transmitter in Houston. At 12, the local paper featured a motorized bicycle which he built out of old parts from his father's steam engine. Howard briefly attended the Thatcher School, a co-ed boarding school in Ojai, California, and later took math and aeronautical courses at Caltech. The brilliant, ambitious Howard was off to a promising start. However, his life would take a sudden, dramatic turn upwards and downwards simultaneously. In March 1922, Howard's mother died from complications of an ectopic pregnancy. Howard Sr. died two years later from a heart attack. At age 19, Howard was declared an emancipated adult, inheriting 75% of the Hughes family fortune. Howard withdrew from Rice University, where he had been attending, and shortly after married Ella Botts Rice, a relative of the man after whom Rice University was named. The two moved to California where Hughes began to pursue two lifelong passions, filmmaking and aviation. He began producing his first film, Swell Hogan, in 1926. The film was a disaster, but his subsequent film work would achieve for him financial and critical success. His 1927 film, Two Arabian Nights, won the first Academy Award for Best Director for a Comedy Picture. During film production, Howard also began taking flight lessons, learning to fly a Waco biplane under pioneer aviators such as Moy Stevens and J.B. Alexander. Aviation became an obsession for Howard, a defining feature of both his personal and professional legacy. Over the course of his life, Howard set several world records, including the airspeed record in 1935, the transcontinental airspeed record a year later, and the fastest trip around the entire globe in just 91 hours, beating the previous record by nearly four days. Howard's love of flying prompted him to kickstart the Hughes Aircraft Company in 1932. Eventually becoming the crown jewel in Howard's legacy, the company had humble roots in a small corner of a Lockheed aircraft hangar in Burbank, California. Hughes Tool Company would sprout many diverse business ventures. From the late 40s to the early 50s, Howard obtained partial ownership of RKO Pictures, a struggling Hollywood studio at the time. Hughes would also venture into real estate, acquiring thousands of acres of land for various ventures which would become key assets in his growing Hughes empire. Over the decades, the Hughes name would dip into everything from electronics to media, communication, just about anything you could think of. Still, Howard's main interest remained his planes. And while Hughes Aircraft was born to humble beginnings, that would soon change as America waded into the throes of World War II. During the war, the company designed a number of prototype aircraft, the Hughes XF-11 reconnaissance aircraft, as well as its predecessor, the D-2 fighter and bomber. Neither of these planes would make it out of the prototype phase. During the test flight for the XF-11, Howard suffered a near-fatal crash, one of four severe crashes he experienced throughout his life. These initial fighters and bombers were merely ripples, though. Howard's biggest splash was yet to come. As the war worsened, the U.S. needed reliable transport to Allied forces overseas. Unfortunately, Allied forces suffered heavy losses from German U-boats. 
To make things more complicated, the aircraft couldn't use any strategic materials, including metal. The challenge to build the HK-1 Hercules, brainchild of industrial Henry Kaiser, was placed squarely in front of Hughes. This airborne behemoth could carry 150,000 pounds, 750 fully equipped troops, or two 30-ton M4 Sherman tanks. It was the largest plane ever built up until 1985, with a wingspan of 319 feet 11 inches. Most impressive of all, it was made entirely of wood. Critics dubbed the monstrosity the Spruce Goose, though it was actually made out of birch wood. Construction of the Spruce Goose, a name Howard hated, proved tumultuous. Construction continued well after the war was over, racking up over $23 million. Despite all the work and money, the Hercules only ever flew one time on November 2nd, 1947 with Hughes at the controls. The monstrous plane stayed up for 26 seconds at 70 feet, flying at 135 miles per hour. Though hardly a giant leap, Hughes considered the project a success as it proved the concept viable. The military didn't see the endeavor quite so favorably, however. Hughes was called to testify before Congress in 1947 for overuse of government funds. During the hearings, Hughes defended his accomplishments, stating, The Hercules was a monumental undertaking. It was the largest aircraft ever built. I put the sweat of my life into this thing. I have my reputation all rolled up in it. And I have stated several times that if it were a failure, I'll probably leave this country and never come back. And I mean it. Still, the Hercules would never fly again. After the war, Hughes aircraft began to deflate, dropping to 800 employees by 1947. By 1953, Hughes gave all the company's stock to the newly formed Howard Hughes Medical Institute as a tax write-off. At that time, Hughes expanded into the blossoming electronics field, and by the end of 1953, employed 17,000 people and held over $600,000 in government contracts. As time passed, Hughes dipped into a number of industries, including aerospace. His keen mind for innovation and investment proved valuable, even in light of what many would have deemed a failure. By his death, he held a net worth of $1.5 billion, nearly $7 billion in 2020. But of course, no brilliant mind is without its share of struggle. Throughout his career, Hughes gained a reputation for many oddities. He often ate the same meal for dinner every night. During film production, cast and crew complained about his fixation on the smallest details and his insistence that people fix any and all irregularities. Howard would often use tissues to pick up objects. What were seen by many as mere eccentricities would soon become all-encompassing. Though never officially diagnosed, Howard likely suffered from severe obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar disorder, and possibly paranoid schizophrenia. While these diseases surely had genetic roots, they were exacerbated by many plane crashes and subsequent overuse of pain medication. His isolation eventually led to a number of controversies and his underlying conditions made it difficult to maintain control over his various endeavors. In 1972, he sold the Hughes Tool Company and formed a holding company called Summa, which also included various properties and other businesses. During the next few years, Howard's accomplishments would slowly fade as his obsession and paranoia drove him deeper into isolation. Hughes died on April 5th, 1975, on an airplane, naturally, that was taking him from Mexico to a hospital in Houston. Ever the enigma, Hughes left no will, and in fact, Several wills appeared over the years, but were all eventually deemed forgeries. As the decades passed, the various businesses that once wore the Hughes moniker were sold off or merged with other big corporations. The legacy of Hughes Aircraft and its eccentric innovator, Howard Hughes, is complicated. His memory is immortalized in his films, like the 2004 biopic, The Aviator. Marvel Stan Lee has even said that Hughes was the inspiration for everyone's favorite billionaire genius playboy philanthropist, Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man. While some view his greatest endeavor as ultimately ending in failure, there are others who see Hughes as a man who would rather take a big swing and miss than never swing at all. Before he was eventually consumed by his own inner darkness, he showed the world what can happen when you dare to dream big. Thank you for watching. We're good company, and if you think we've earned it, we'd love to gain your subscription. While you're at it, why not hit that like button and the bell icon so you don't miss our future stuff. If you have friends you think would like our content, share this on social media. We got some great company stories to tell you about, and we can't wait to bring it all to you at the same time next Monday. Cheers, and we'll see you guys next week.